hovering on there. Let's see how much everyone in this. You alright guys, sorry I'm late. I've just been stuck in an EVP session upstairs. So I just got back online now. Who's on this evening? As you see, I'm just sat in the living room of the Pontifact Poltergeist house. I'll just span you around so you can have a look. There's Pete. You alright, Kerry? What are you doing up late? You nutter. How is everyone? Alright, Rachel. What I'll do is I'll take you quickly round and just show you the Pontifact Poltergeist House. Um, obviously, for everybody in the UK, it's half past one in the morning. Um, obviously, you American viewers are a bit behind us, so you're all right. I'll just sift through now. Dining area. There's some stuff in here, which is quite old. Hang on. Keys. Cool, I've been smashing loads of EVPs with UQuest this evening. How are you doing, Jackson? How are you doing, mate? We've been quite busy just smashing it from room to room. We've been here since 6 o'clock, so we've been here for most of the day. Um, so there's some stuff here, which is quite interesting. Um, some evidence for you to look at, where they Believing that picture's true or not is up to anybody else. Not for me to say. Shadows here, look. Some more evidence making here. Some shadow changing. Yeah, I bet you're tired. I'm getting pretty tired actually at the moment. I'm starting to withdraw. Not all drinking a bit. There's stuff everywhere. It's, it's a good place to explore. It's fantastic, you know, there's loads of things to look at. Um, I've, I've had some quality EVPs this evening. Uh, myself and Pete included. I had a quality EVP. I asked it, what are you? And it replied, evil. So that's quite interesting. Different questioning techniques on an uh, investigation like this. Because obviously, the one in question was uh, supposedly murdered kids into a well and the well is supposed to be wedged between this house and next door and it's supposed to be below the ground so that's where it's supposed to be located so if you can look it up the black monk of pontifact you better look it up and then have, have a look on the story on that which is quite interesting so it's 30 east drive the address Nobody lives here. Um, you can rent it out for investigations and stuff like that. Uh, it's also registered B&B or something. But yeah, it's quite interesting. We've had some good EVPs and I'm absolutely knackered. So I can quickly go and show you around if you want. The rest of the team from UQuest is here, look. Ryan, this is who's here. Me and Nicola from UQuest. Say hi to live stream. Hello. So this is just going up the stairs now, as you can see. And I get to the top. There's some more UQuest team up here. Here's Sir Kester, guys. Got some more of the, the squad here. The lavatory. Hey. 
Lisa from Uquest. Another Uquest. Linda. Linda. Sorry, there's loads of names for me to remember here. Just call them that lot. Who's, who's chumped again? Bye bye. Get ready for James. Hello. There we go. They're all here, look. Then Pete. And uh, Pete. Pete. There's stuff set out everywhere, so people have been setting up trigger objects everywhere. Um, you can use them as you go along. Tell Kester I said happy birthday. Kester! Oh. Kerry says happy birthday. Oh, thank you very much. Ah, <laughs> oh, I forgot it was your birthday, did you? Hey, look. Did you call that? What did you just say? I forgot it was your birthday. Say it again. I forgot it was your birthday. Awkward. Ah, uh, Kester. Kester. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, as you can see, this is one of bedrooms I'm in at the moment. Everyone's here. You alright, Kathy? How's America? One of his friends. <laughs> we still are live. Yeah, we are, yeah. Thanks for telling us on that one. <laughs> ah, but this is the main big room next to the bathroom. This is apparently this is the room where most of them. What actually happened, happened, but the poltergeist. <laughs> he would go around up the whole of the house, it wasn't just one room. And I say at this point, I want to bring a friend Carl to this place to catch up some friends because I've been here before and on two occasions I've heard it laugh and I've got it recorded. So I wanted to bring him here to have his own experience so that he can actually validate what we've experienced and the great thing is he can he's got his own recordings yeah. growling that was burping there it definitely got it it's answering two questions and me for personal that's just fantastic because we've got somebody here who can really verify that what I've experienced what Lisa has experienced is absolutely genuine it's not just our uh, say so. Carl, he's got his own uh, audio of that, and no doubt you're gonna put it on YouTube. Yes. Put it on YouTube. But let me. What did you think when you heard that? When you played that back? It made me smile actually. It was uh, quite odd because some of the, some of the stuff I've got, like um, I'm evil, um, no way. As in mocking, no way, no like um, we attitude that thing. That's what got me. Because you know the nice thing is that when you got that, it, it, the birds are tweeting. It's coming to twilight time. It's getting dark. And yes, the question was it. Do you recognise Kester? And it growled. No. No, we've been here twi twice before. Yep. And we've recorded it. Yep. Loudly. Top of stairs and at the bottom of the stairs. So this one he said, no, it doesn't recognise me. And then you said, then you asked, can you say Kester? Was that the question? Yes. And what did it say? No way. But it did it with a pause. I've never ever had a, a recording for where somebody's asked two questions and both questions have been answered really quite clearly. I think that's fantastic. I mean, have you ever had that before? What do you call? So yeah, mate. Have you ever had that before where you've actually asked two questions and it's answered both questions twice? No. I haven't I mean, actually. Intelligently as well. Not like it did. And we've got the other EVPs as well. When I, uh, a while ago, when I just felt so tired in that small room, I said, um, what's your problem? And it replied, you. Yeah. That's something else. I don't think I've ever been on a ghost hunt where we've had so many responses all at the same time. You know, just three people recording on dictaphones and actually having that same 
answer coming back are predictable. That's fantastic, especially as much of problems as you are. Uh, what was the other question they asked? Replied yes. Uh, or was, can you kick the ball? Yeah. And that little voice said yes, although he didn't actually kick the ball. Do you feel lighter, Kester? A little bit. I was, I was um, starting to speak a bit faster. You know, if we were doing the little um, session in the small room and that just felt very tired and dizzy. There's a bit of a bit of white orbage coming off. But in this room, this room is quiet. Yeah. Quiet. But in the small room, strangely enough, there's much more happening. Yeah, but, you've got K2 going off next door. But the K2 going off. Mm -hmm. Of course, when we were downstairs, you up here, you said that you were calling out my name and yeah. saying other things and pointed out me and you in particular. Yeah. Yeah, we were, we were... But you know the great thing is, Carl can verify what we've experienced. He's got his own recordings, he's heard it himself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because they're all three different dictaphones. So it's not a difference, it's just heard no. by, yeah, we've actually, all three was picked strong. This is, do you remember Kester, and it just growls, no. And it, during the day, it wasn't very night. Mm -hmm. The only things you have to do a ghost hunt at night, you don't have to start during the day and still get a response. Yeah. I said, can you say Kester? Mm -hmm. No way. But it was shouting your name on the spirit box. <laughs> <laughs> it's very fantastic. And it ain't over yet. We still got a long well, ways to go. Yet again, this house never lets us down. Three times we've been here, three lots of different activities each time. Never the same. But this is the Apart from that growl. Oh, something else. That growl. Yeah. Ah! Yeah. You just heard it, is that what you've seen? You heard a growl downstairs? So, um, you quest, you quest team have been downstairs, guys. And they just heard a growl with their own ears downstairs. Growl downstairs, either the passageway or the front room. But as we were talking about the growl, she got on downstairs. So it might be a good idea to try and do something in the sitting room. Do right. some EVPs in the sitting room. Lisa, Carl. Yeah. Let's go. Oh, people want to hear them EVPs. You want to hear them again? Yeah, they haven't heard them on live stream, have they? <laughs> let's play them downstairs. Yeah, let's get set up down. We'll set up downstairs, guys, and then I'll uh, replay the EVPs for you. Uh, where's the? I took it next. Oh, time. you took it down. Yeah, cool. It's alright. I've got I've got using the Uquest speaker because they've got a quality Altec speaker, so you can hear more definition of what's on the EVP. Um, so I use different techniques as usual with this house. Yeah, cafe is. There is something quite strange here. Um, it likes to play silly buggers. Now you know how I felt. This is Nikki. She, she heard the first time was here. She was downstairs. I was upstairs. She heard it. The second time, kind of right in this area. Yeah. Yeah, because I was stood. On the stairs, and you're on that sort of stairs. I'll just like, you know, and I don't know whether it's in the passage because it was my left ear. I don't know if it's in the passage or somewhere in here, but I heard it in the back of my head. Could you I identify roughly where it was standing when you got it? Why don't you go and show us? Just... Okay. Well, stood here. So, where you was... had just gone upstairs. Where do, where do you think the growl was? Oh, no, right, I'm just there. setting this up. The second time is about here. Yeah. This evening, you can do whatever you want to myself. Do you know Kester? But now you know how I know. When it happens, twice, you're not scared of you know. That's the one. Just changing speaker, guys. <laughs> this big bad boy is very good. Only the best for you, Quest. <laughs> but yeah, it's only because I'm 
I mentioned that I've not actually heard anything. Kester, can you just plug this in for me? <coughs> plug it in my hole. What is it you want plugging in? Yeah, just hold that, I'll put it in. Do you know Kester? Turn it down. Straight away. Do you know Kester? Can you see? Do you know Kester? Can you say his name for me? Oh, no way. I don't even want to say his name, guys. Can you say his name for me? No way. EVP7. EVP7 box room. I was asking various questions, me and Pete. I'd like to shout into it. You're outside that door, aren't you? A bit more further on. Come in here. Come and talk to me. Tell me about your crimes, all them kids you killed. Them helpless little kids. Come and tell me about them. Sorry. It's time for you to man up now. How many did you kill? Did that rope hurt around your neck? Tony says she can't hear. Can't hear it. I'm here. Which one? Tony. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Go back to the uh, first one, the growl, that was just yeah. spectacular. It's very, very faint though, so you probably won't hear it properly. Mm. What kick did you get out of what your actions did? I want to find this I'm evil one. I'm just trying to find this I'm evil one, guys, on here. Just bear with me a sec. Patience is a virtue with ghost hunting. Do you know how much we've got? today. What are you? Now let me turn it up. What are you? No, with... Did you hear that? What are you? Right, hang on. I think I know what their problem is. That one, people... You played it around to the people and everybody says, I'm evil. There you go. It's probably it. Hey! They might better hear it better now. Alright, <laughs> let's go for it. What are you? Do you hear that guys? There's a little bit of a, like a delay, there's like a five second delay. Uh, tell me if you've... I don't know, there's something floating around his foot then. Did you hear it? I don't want to read it so look. <clears throat> heard it, heard it. Heard it. Heard ah, it. Yana. Yeah, so... Right. Did you know... Let's have a go at it. Alright, you got it. You asked, you get. Simple as. Okay. See, the good thing about that is... Most of the people here can hear that one. Yeah. I can't. 
But when I played you that EVP that I got from the Ancient Ram in, yeah. the first time we heard it, we heard a growl. The second time we played it back, we heard the word balls in there. Right. And then I played it for you in your car, through your car speakers. Oh, and you yeah, couldn't yeah. hear it, and yeah, I'm yeah. thinking, and I, yeah. it was freaking there. Yeah, yeah. And that's why I sort of like, I had that light conversation with Lisa, and she says, oh yeah, I remember that one. She says what she saw, she heard balls on there. And it's sometimes like that with EVPs. Some people can, some people can't. Generally, most people hear exactly the same thing, but you do come across those recordings where some people do, some people don't. Which is why I'm so impressed with that one that you got earlier. Do you yeah. remember Kester? And it growled. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, this is a, a classic poltergeist in here. Poltergeists are not known to speak. They communicate by banging on things. And you listen to that second recording I've got, second time it's here, and you thought you could hear words, I listened to it, yeah. hears words. It's quite possible then they can actually speak. Well, if, they, I, if, 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 pol I see, if poltergeists can bang... I'm sure they can do audio if they I, want to, but I think they prefer to do touchable stuff because it's better and it's more visual than they get more of a response than what they would as a voice. It's, they're characterised by bangs and spiteful, puerile behaviour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So knocking some other, you know. But not really standing up to say it was me. But the clock, did we tell them about the clock? Is that? That we moved earlier. Uh, it's flashing. It was. Can you make it flash again? Then lights. Go on, flash it again. Go on. Do you know the nice thing is when you say, "Do you know Kester or do you recognise Kester?" and it said no. Yeah. I'm freaking relieved, man. <laughs> <laughs> but this, when you you got it, and I'm by the doorway, and I can burst in, so what the f was that? Yeah. I couldn't believe it. It's fantastic. Well, it's a it response that was so fast, wasn't it? Well, that, that you remember was the, rocking. Earlier. So. This. We just sort of like stood here having a chat. Yeah. Carl stood right where he is and he says, uh, stand still. What What was that? I thought it my bag rocking. Turn around and saw this moving. If I just pick it up and drop it, it'll move the way we saw it. So, that kind of like shaking. Yeah, I'd say that, yeah. Like, like type of, like that, isn't it? It's That's like it, yeah, it was just rocking back and forth, but it's got an artex on the wall. Yeah. We're not even touching it. We can jump up and down, it's not going to move, but there it was. I tried that. Right, it's Kathy, Kathy wants me to do something, didn't she? Pulse guys are show off, they usually hang about a demon, orb. So you reckon and there's a demon here then, Kathy? Right, we'll do an EVP. How's Nikki? Alright, I'm going to have to borrow this, guys, because we're going to do a spirit discussion with these guys in the box room. Go for it. Okay. Yeah, ma'am. Should we have this kitchen light off and get passive by, so... Yeah. I'll shut this, well, I'll shut this door as good as I can, because the extension... Trying to get... Ah, uh, that's it. Now we're in the dark. Do you want to take that for a moment whilst just set up this static yeah. camera? Infrared. Yeah. Whoa. Got my dictaphone running. Why is it doing that there like that? Kathy, we've heard apparently there are seven here. I don't know why it's doing that. My camera here is high spec, it doesn't give off any static charge. There's a torch there, just pick up and move the torch. I don't think that's it. Nope. Dictaphone. Never dictaphone. Too small. Okay, that's, you hold that, I'm going to quickly set this up. Yeah. <clears throat> See, when I get closer to it, it slows down. It slows down. So when I move further back... You see that, guys? You know, I'm 
I'm going to set this stand up high. Can you make it flash to red? <laughs> flash red. All that. All that. Hang on. Oof. Thanks, Nikki. Oh. <laughs> Not everything that goes bump in the night is a ghost. It could just be people in the kitchen looking for a Pepsi. Alright, I'm going to set up an EVP. But she was so quiet, we still heard it. You know, your senses are buzzing. You ready? Are you setting that up? Just wait for Kesh to set that up so there's no uh, clicks and clangs. And then we'll start an EVP. She was genuinely spooked. She's down at the bottom of the stairs. She's still going for it. There's nothing around here as well, guys. You know what I mean? Can you go to red? Go to red. Go on, go to red. Red. Now, if I come up close to it... So she's still going. I'm further back. <clears throat> Can you stop flashing them lights for me? Red enough now. What's that noise then? Did you hear that? Like it... I heard this creep behind me. No, this is over here. There. It's not that. See, I heard a kind of like a, a whistling sound. Fuck knows what that were. Never mind, my I want it to stop flashing. Can you stop it flashing now? I order you to stop them lights flashing now. I'm gonna move it. Stopped. And I've got it in my hand. You know what I mean? Did you hear that creaking, Tanya? So they heard, Tanya heard that creaking. That's no window. Can you make it flash? You set up. You know, I'm going to set this uh, camera up in here. Uh, he's going to set his camera up in there. Do you know, this is half the problem with carrying a camera. It's this constant going back. There you go, Jack said. Here, See, there. this is what gets me, right? Oh, I'll pick it up. I'll put it back there where there's nothing, right? That coffee table, there's something fucking weird. No, there's no socket near there. Not for that amount, anyway. Plasma ball. Turn it off. <laughs> That's it, guys. Debunked. I didn't see that pissing thing in corner. There, look. That's what's causing it. It fucking is not. No, it is not. Look. Look at that. It's still spiking. That one's picking something up. This one isn't. So, K2's picking something up. And his isn't. Gauss Master. Uh. 
There's uh, these heaters, Jackson. They're definitely not on. I can tell you that. This house is totally... Fucking no one lives here. It ranges from freezing cold to boiling hot. Where do you want me to move it to? Near there? Or do you want me to move the meter there? See what I'll do. You know, put meter on Holy Bible. Does your audience want to know a bit about the history of the house? There's a mosquito in there, I think. Right, EVP session, guys. We're ready to go. Any questions people want to ask? I shall ask. Right, let's get settled. Here you are. If any of your viewers want to know a bit of history about the house, what happened here, just ask. There's an anomaly near the radiator. Right, what I'm doing, guys, is I'm sitting on settee. EVP 11, living room. Off of the Pontefact Poltergeist House. To whatever you are that resides within this house, I want you to name yourself. I want a name. I want you to tell me what you are. Where do you come from? What do you want? I don't think there's any history on the table of ours. I think there's just all random bits of furniture. It was bought from the local charity shops because it had, you know, memorabilia. So it's been recreated from the 1970s from the 1970s available furniture. But the haunting, well, the poltergeist first appeared in about 1966. And I think it was here in this living room, there was the grandmother and the son started seeing what could be described as like little flakes of dust settling down so it started in here then they started noticing pools of water in the kitchen but they were perfectly circular uh, <clears throat> as for what the sequence of events before it really started i'm not too sure i think it was one night they found uh, jam and toilet roll wrapped around all the door handles upstairs the lady of the house, she was approaching the bathroom, there's some Hoover equipment propped up by the top of the stairs and apparently it lifted up and started waving in front of her. But down here in the living room, two things, no, three things really stand out. It would tap on the window when it was going to make its announcement, so if we hear any tapping on the window it would be fantastic. I don't think these are the original windows, but it would tap. And they knew that something was coming. The lady of the house, this lady here, if I can show you, she had a friend round one evening and they wanted to do what English people do and that's have tea and eat sandwiches. They had some food, some sandwiches on a plate in here in the living room and I believe the TV was in that corner. When the lights went out, 
They knew something was happening. After a few moments, the lights went on, but the plate of sandwiches were all gone. They were all missing. They had a look around the house. And they, knew, they noticed that there was something wrong now. You know, those things just too big, too out of ordinary happening. When they found the sandwiches behind the TV set. And one of these sandwiches had a big bite mark right out the middle. So the teeth must have been huge, massive. And I think it's this lady's friend, she put one of the sandwiches in a plastic bag and she took them home with her. But apparently it just disintegrated. And how it disintegrated and what form, don't know, but apparently it just disintegrated a few days later. It just became nothing whatsoever. Oh, it's got a chilly, chilly feeling. And it was in this room, I think it was, must have been here, the main... Do you want to stand up and feel it? Because it's chilly. You're getting chill there. I don't know. I don't have a heat measure. Mm -hmm. It's getting really, really chilly. The story goes, Cathy, is that apparently underneath this house and next door is a really old well. And the story goes that a black monk was a killer of children and that's where he used to chuck the bodies apparently uh, one of them stands out because one of the children's that he was abused he cut a tongue out but she could read and write so she told Still the police yeah the sheriffs of the time you know we had police in about in the 1800s and i believe the accounts of the black monk are supposed to be about 1470 or 1500, something like that. But in this room, it's getting a bit cold, it's actually getting chilly. Just gonna get in some more of a distance so you can see more. The lady of the house, she had a, a friend round and a skeptic came round. That's flashing there. Because uh, he wanted to say, Well, do you really have a ghost in, in this house? Well, the lights went out again, it was all darkness. He was Apparently he was very, very afraid. He was sat down, she was stood up. She stood next to him, just put a hand on his shoulder to comfort him, saying, this happens quite often, don't be scared, it is alarming. When she looked down, she noticed that there was a pair of feet behind hers and behind hers. And she said, she thought it was kind of like something uh, medieval. I don't know if you saw, she saw sandals or shoes. But she gave the impression that she thought she saw like robes. And from that, that's where the idea that it could be a black monk. And it was compounded by an apparition, so they say, where she woke up one night and was upstairs in one of the rooms there. The door was open and somebody walked past and she said it was, looked like a monk wearing robes. And the thing with the poltergeist is they can play some very pure on pranks. Because really, was it a monk? Um, when they said, when they had discussions, in, is it a monk or whatever it is? I think that night or a few nights later, there's a can of gold spray paint. It was out in the garden there, one of the sheds. It doesn't seem to exist anymore. They found, I think, three upside down crucifixes painted on the walls in gold. But they weren't just sprayed on, they were perfectly aligned, all sharp, sharp edges and sharp corners. I've come in here with an infrared light, not infrared, sorry, uh, ultraviolet, to try and find traces of it, but I can't seem to find any traces of upside down crosses painted in here. So the question is, is if it was a monk, why would it do something like that? But then it's interesting, you know, three crosses, that would have been Jesus and the two thieves, wouldn't it? But I'm, I don't understand. I'm a boy, I'm sweating, but I'm cold at the same time. Mm. It's um. Let's have a look. It's a weird feeling. I got a feeling. Half an hour. I've been on ghost hunts where the best things have happened. At uh, quarter to three. What I'm hoping was going to happen, we're going to get the growl again. 
twice I've heard it growl or kind of laugh straight in my face. And about 10 minutes ago, it just happened to Nikki and she was actually quite upset about it. She just couldn't really believe what she's heard. She used to kind of laugh and giggle at me saying, yeah, it likes you. But all of a sudden, it's gone after her. Yeah, you're probably right, Kathy. I think if it was a monk, he wasn't a true monk, and he was probably practicing some, practicing something like the dark arts or something. It po most possibly could be. The real black monk that we know of apparently had such a bad reputation, so many crimes, they kind of sent him to monastery as a form of prison. He was in a monastery, he wasn't out, he wasn't hurting people, but apparently he just went out and did his own thing anyway. So he was never really a monk. The question is, is the historical one, or whatever haunts this building, one and the same? Should we explore the kitchen? Mm, can do. Yeah, you might, uh, others guys, because they're doing their stuff upstairs. Uh, they'll probably come down in a bit, and then we'll swap up and go upstairs. We'll do a bit of this, yeah. Sorry for yawning guys, I've been up since 5 o'clock. <laughs> so, we're going to the hallway now. It is lovely witching hour, you're That's right. 10 minutes ago Nikki was stood here. She said she heard it if it was in her left ear. So it'll be about here. The second time I heard it laugh, it seemed to be coming straight from this point here. Mm -hmm. uh, about this corner. Yeah, let's not show them all the pieces we've been having. We'll tidy up. But this is the kitchen floor where perfectly circular pools of water were found. If you didn't see it before, guys, I think a few of you... Cathy. I don't know if you can see that properly. Because of light. Uh, let me get it. So you've got like some form of legs going off here, coming up to a body and a head. If you can see that. You know the other thing that happened in this kitchen at one night, uh, the lady, I believe her name is Jean, she was cooking away, and I think it's the same setup. We're in sink here, oven here. She was cooking dinner. And she had some eggs. Uh, maybe she was cooking an omelette, I don't know. She turned around, and she, maybe, I don't know where it was in here particularly. She turned around to get an egg and she saw one of the eggs floating out of the egg box. Just floated up and it was coming towards her. And in the midair it just broke and just fell on the floor. And it seemed to do that a couple of times. I mean, what she did is she got some eggs. Uh, fresh eggs, you know, the place the ones have been broken. And she said, I'm not having this. I'm not then you break all these eggs in here again. Then she put them into a box and then she sat on the box. So it might have been a chest or something like that. She sat on it, you know, in defiance, saying, No more, don't break any more eggs. And then she heard some cracking sounds. She turned around, found eggs were floating in the air, and they all cracked and fell on the floor. I'm going to show you how strong some characters can be. Yeah. This is what you get when you first come in. Ah. So, important aren't you? Ah, it's the walkie talkie. First, liable for your own safety. The owner cannot be held responsible if you're unhappy with this and you must leave the property now. So, we don't do no Ouija boards. Anyone find them using this will be ejected from the property. The uh, camera upstairs. So, there is warnings, okay? That's fair play, and, um... Cold room! My eyes have got flashes of light in my eyes. What's Fred? Say? Fred! Yeah, that's what they call him. That's what they call him here, Fred. Fred! This little room was a coal bunker. Now, for all the American viewers there, you, you probably haven't got a clue what this is, but... Down here, this is coal, and you know what coal is for. 
got to store coal in a room like here and apparently the husband who didn't really want to believe there was anything in his house he went in here one day because his coat was missing when well, he found his coat was under the coal apparently he tried to take it out he couldn't get out of this room here he was stuck when he noticed that there was something else coming out of the coal I think it was some sort of apparition or something like that but he was terrified he didn't want to uh, mess around anymore and leave the kitchen Creeks. Was there a crucifix in there? In where? Uh, there was one upstairs in the bedroom. Three gold crucifixes were painted on the walls in here. But there's I was having a debate one night. There's one upstairs, Cather. The crucifix. But in here somewhere, I don't know where these crucifixes were painted. There is one upstairs. He was having a discussion one day in the early days and he tried to say, no, we don't have a problem here. There's no ghost, there's no poltergeist. I think one of them may have been son, I don't know exactly. Made a comment saying, there's nothing in this house. Where in the kitchen, I think there's a, a coffee grinder or something that was actually fixed to the wall. We just pulled out the wall and hit the floor. So it wants to it kind of wants to make itself known, but exactly what it's doing here, what it wants, we don't really know. The family did like a seance, maybe in the living room or the rooms next to us or somewhere, got into a circle, held hands and they tried to call out to this entity, whatever it is. And apparently as the story goes, because I only really know the story, Every single conceivable object on the upstairs, that's uh, three bedrooms and the bathroom, was thrown down the stairs. I believe even the mattresses what? and beds, every single thing, they had to just saw I Just saw a figure behind Kester. <laughs> Hopefully that's just my shadow. Uh, Tanya, there's n nobody lives here at all. No. Nobody lives here. Yeah, we just rent it. From somebody who owns it. Um, so yeah, there's nobody lives here at all. It's just left as it is. Um, was we in here? Was we in here? Was we in here, Cafe? So it doesn't feel evil in this house. I personally would just be a bit careful because um, I've seen to be very, very successful of uh, getting recordings of coughs, mm. words, whatever they are. I'd be very, very careful. So I personally wouldn't stay in here alone, but it's not evil. I never fall for the idea of demons because we weren't in here. people just sort of like... If they don't understand it, don't like it, want to be dramatic, they take demons. We just don't need to go that far. Right, so we're going to get some pictures. It doesn't feel... It feels, you know, okay, okay, it just... Uh, How would you describe it? It doesn't feel threatening, ominous. No. It feels as though it's gone calm. It's. Um. The hat. Sorry about that, guys. All right. The house itself. I would say. The house is intimidating. But that's because I think it's the way it looks. Because you don't see the look of this house no more. Um, no, it, it's, it's got an old look to it. It's antiquated. It's antiquated? Is that the word we could use? Yeah. But whilst it's there, why don't you put your finger over... Why is there, why is there a mist? Maybe it's 
for your pipe. Did you just have a smoke? No. I got chewing gum. Because I just saw it myself with my own eyes, it was drifting down here. I got chewing gum. So why have you got mist? I've just seen it. Yeah, I've just you. seen it. I, saw, I just thought you were smoking. No. And I've just said it. <laughs> It feels, uh, you know, I'm trying to suggest it's gone quiet. I saw it myself. But I saw that myself. I don't know what that mist were, Tanya, because I was sat down having a chewing gum. I saw it in the light, I saw it from here and I thought... It right in front of me. It's a cigarette, that's what I'm thinking. It might be something, you know, we've seen beforehand. You know, the first instance. Are they jogging upstairs? I don't know, but I need to do an EVP, Caster. We need to do an EVP. EVP 12. Was you showing yourself in front of me? In Caster. What is your name? Don't you want to talk to me? I'm sure I saw you in front of me. Oh mate, I saw it myself. There. Yeah. No, I sat down, had a chewing gum. I would tell them to be quiet, but it's their location. <laughs> We're guests this evening. So, I want to know your name. I want to know why you're here. Hey, you do. I had my camera on. I'll stop. Yeah. Gotta play it back later. Yes. If it was on there, it should have recorded. I just moved it down a bit. Yeah, it should have been on there. Yeah, because I sat down, got a chewing gum, put I camera on you, and then yeah, there was... I saw clouds billowing down your leg, and I'm mm. thinking, you just had an e cigarette, I didn't think anything of it, it was harmless. Six minutes we'll review it later. Behind that door. You see that door move? Suck this one up, guys. We're guests here. This location. Yeah, I've got to thank my friends. Gans back at this place. Yeah. See, you quest, they're all friends of mine. We met three years ago, actually, in this house. Yeah, we will see it on live stream. When I da I'll download it on YouTube tomorrow at some point. You didn't put your hand in front of the uh, torchlight, did you? Hmm? Just, do you know when you put it, your hand in front of like the light, you know, and you see a shadow? Yeah. I've just seen a shadow go across the chair, the settee. 
But you haven't put your hand in front of that light. No. I don't get it. Let's have a listen to this. DMP 12. Keeping that hand, actually. Was you showing yourself in front of me? In Kester? Maybe these are pretty much out at the moment. It's loud, isn't it? Don't you want to talk to me? I'm sure I saw you in front of me. That was Kester's bag. I remember now. doing a bit is that we'll probably end up swapping with them upstairs and we'll do upstairs for a bit that's quite cool man what that cloud was I've got a clue I ain't got an explanation for that because I got my chew I was fumbling around for my chewing gum when I was stood up I know that I got my chewing gum out I sat down that's something which needs to be reviewed on, on the camera because Kester's been recording whilst we've been doing this. I know it's contaminating, contaminating EVP. Um, we'll have to try one in a bit. Upstairs is best. It's a nice little location up there. A couple of rooms like. Well, I, I need to know what that's. Smog was. We've just had <clears throat> kind of like a, a cloud, you know, do you know some like cigarette smoke? Mm -hmm. It's just come out just below past us. I thought Carl was just having an e-cigarette, but no he wasn't. I don't know what it is. Sorry, I'm only just starting to take the camera with me. Um just the ones upstairs yeah. in the rooms that we're not using. You know, the plan shit and stuff, but just put them away. Excuse me, I'll pack that everyone I'll come in here. But later on, I'm going to have to review that. I need to know yeah. what it was. Because I was sat down on the chewing gum, and then I saw it form. It was like a plume of smoke. Mm. We, we ain't smoking. It was a plume of smoke just billowed past. Right. Well, as I say, it's not that it's down the bottom, and I... The amount of EVP that we've got, and the fact that from a third party can actually verify our experiences that we've got recorded. Yeah. I think after all these years, I can just finally just rest now. Yeah, no. Yeah. You're back in August. You're back in August. August the 15th. Yeah. 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 I'm just really tired, really good. Carl's got recording. Like we've recorded, he's got himself, he's asked a few questions, he's got the answers. And now he's just so genuine. <laughs> hey up, Dave. Have you just got back? Mm. Dave's on. Is he? Yeah. He must have finished thinking, got, just got Grace, back. Grace Dew. I was Grace Dew, Dave. Was it all right, mate? A bit of a delay. No, 
Just got back home. Yeah, we'll have to go back, Dave, to Grace too then. Sorry, I think my finger might have been of it. Right, Tonya, apologise about that. Says Dave. I think it's because I was too close to it, Tanya, with phone. This is the bed that gets backed around, kicked up sometimes. Um, I've been on it several times this evening. Um, nothing's happened that to me. But I have got a couple of EVPs that's interesting from this room tonight. Uh, from me and Kester. Um, so that's quite interesting. Um, Kester just arrived. <laughs> Small room with car. Exactly. So, this house is all decorated, as in, as in, if it was still 1970, all of it. So you need to understand that all the decor is old fashioned. There's artex everywhere. The carpets are really old fashioned. It is. <laughs> The fuck's that? What godless heathen music have you found? Well, we're trying to fix it uh, up. It's working. He's watching one of us. He's watching one of us. He can see eyes watching, but it's not him. I just don't know who's watching. <coughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Oh, yeah, that was mine, yeah. Thank you. You want this carpet in your house, Dave? I'm trying to play music to That's ghost hunting. We take it seriously, but it is still so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> just take the uh... even when you know something happens and it gives you a spook and you just take a few minutes just to like bring yourself together it's just good fun it's a great adventure they're going to call bees I've noticed this wow. recently it's both hot, but you feel cool breezes around this place. But in this room, it's hot. Yeah. Wow. Oh, let's see the stairway. Don't you like George Michael, Kathy? No one was George Michael. Tricky to believe, but I wouldn't be surprised that she tried to pass by the area. That they would swing back and forth as if they say, you know, uh, you you shall not pass, which is a bit of a peculiar one. <laughs> it's quite funny. The young girl and her friend. She brought a friend over. She went to use the bathroom, and something in there terrified her. She couldn't get out, and they tried the door handle. It wasn't in the just wasn't going to open. And there's one thing I do find a bit tricky. Apparently there's a big clock that's been here. But there's a big clock here, there's not much room to pass by. Apparently that was thrown down the stairs. The young girl, one day she was at the bottom of the stairs and she was dragged up. I think when she was dragged up, a crucifix levitated across and stuck to her back. I wouldn't move. Apparently, it was quite a long, long time. It wasn't sort of 10 or 20 minutes or so. It was a lot longer. It just would not come off her back. I tried everything, but it wasn't going to come off. And I think maybe an hour or so, it just fell away. She must have been terrified. Jam is jelly in America. Jam is jelly. Um, what would you describe jam in America? In American terminology. She said jelly. 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 I don't know what it is, but you know, it's a pure old thing to do. It's not really. Well, it would be scary if you wake up in the night and you hear some banging and you see your house has just been made a mess and you wonder where it's come from, why it's happened. It would be terrifying. Although it's not necessarily a, an evil act or any form of terror, it's just a pure old type of joke. You said you want to have a look inside the um, loft. Carl? Yeah. I don't know if you can get up there. Because <clears throat> I'm going to piss it in there. You'll love it, Rachel, it's quality. It's, um, what's in here? Oh, lovely. Cliche, but it seems to be the voice of a, a little girl. 
Yeah. Yeah. Why am I fucked, Dave? How did Dave find great view? I enjoyed it. Got you. I can't wait to go back again. Excellent. Dave, did you get anything? Did you get interesting, Dave? I've got 4G, decent 4G, but... Oh, so I'm just lying down, guys. It's 20 to 3 in the morning. Tell them to volley it. Right. Anybody in here, I want you to volley that as hard as you can. Smack it as hard as you can. Kick it out of that door, don't mess around. Uh, hopefully, in a minute. <laughs> Come on, kick it. Come on, Black Monk. Stop messing around. Kick that ball. Kick it in my face. Come on. Stop messing around. Let's have that ball in my grid. Come on, it'd be funny if you kick it in my face. Come on. Come on, boot it. You're supposed to be an old, powerful, mighty poltergeist. I've heard all sorts about you. Come on. Smack that ball. Come on, boot it. Boot it right in my bollocks. Go on, do something outrageous for me. I've heard a lot about you. I want you to move that ball for me. Don't mess around, Black Monk. I'm lying on this bed waiting for you. Yep, exactly, Kathy. Chelsea are crap. And Arsenal. Go on. Score for Man United. Go on, boot that ball. Why won't you boot that ball for me? Move it. You know you want to. Yeah, man. Now you're talking. Glory, glory, Man United. Come on. Come on, we're all MP paranormal. You like that, Dave? Fred, come on.
Come on, Fred. We're waiting for you. Go on, Fred. You can do it, Fred. Fred, I don't believe that you're here. You can't even move a ball. You got no power whatsoever. I think you crap. Show me that I'm wrong. Doing a bacon butter. Not up here, Tanya. Now, I think they've packed it away now. Pardon me. Fred, your ball bag. Come on. Tell him, Jackson. Move the fucking ball. Come on. Get that ball moved. Is everyone going now, are they? Can we stay? I've got tickets for August, you know. 15th, I think. We're going to have to wrap up now, guys. Because I think key's over. Do you find that... Um what we've done here today just sets a bit of groundwork for a bit more in the future. Definitely, yeah, because now it knows me. It definitely knows you. <laughs> it's responded to you many so, times. I'm going to say goodbye to these. Right, guys, everyone's wrapping it up now. Um, cameras are being packed away. Uh, key's going to be handed back in. Big thanks to UQuest. Big thanks to UQuest for letting me come tonight. It's been absolutely amazing. To come to this place uh, is on a hot list at the moment of paranormal teams um, so everyone's coming at the moment and it's nice of them to have me here so you I'd like to thank everyone at UQuest for bringing me here and Kester as well you're the uh, one that really verifies what we've got here in Kester well yeah we verify anybody's got the evidence what they got in the past so that makes it all well worth it um, obviously me and Kester got here and about five o'clock. Um, so I'm quite fucking tired now. Uh, it's been a long day. We've got some good evidence. We've got some good EVPs to show Dave. Um, I'm going to love you and leave you guys. Um, make sure you check out Periscope again. Because I've, I've done a few videos on that as well. Um, some little interesting ones. Whilst I've been online. Um, Say goodbye to too. And I'd like to say goodbye to everyone. Uh, Kester would like to. Thank you very much and good night. It's been really, really something special. Ghost hunting is a, something I've done for a long time. Tonight has been really, really, I don't know, what's the word, magical. It's somebody else and you people can share what we've experienced here before. So you're our um, verifiers. Thank you very much. Shall I catch?